From the John DeVita Broadcast Center, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another broadcast of Paranormal Radio with Bob Trisek on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network and Jack FM 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich. So sit back and enjoy Paranormal Radio. And now, here he is, the king of Paranormal Radio, Mr. Robert Trisek. Thank you, John. Thanks very much. Um, here we go again. We're right in the middle of the Christmas season here, the second week into the uh, month of December, uh, this nice cold uh, December 12th. And this show, we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to do a couple of things on this show. Um, one of them will be uh, the story of the Christmas tree ship, which I like to do every year. I give that one. Uh, and then the talented uh, Mike and Jessica Rovner are here. They'll be doing some music for us. We've got some Christmas music, and we are also going to be doing a play. Um, this is something we've never done before on Paranormal Radio. Um, it's a play that we actually did a couple of weeks ago. We did this at the Lions Park District and at the Summit Park District. It's one of ten. Uh, there were ten ten-minute plays, and this is one of the ten-minute plays. This one is called A Box of Ashes, and we all take a little part in this, and uh, it's kind of fun. So we're going to see how this goes over on the radio. We're going to do that. Um, before we get rolling with the show here, uh, we actually started a little, a little late tonight. It's about 7.30, but it doesn't matter because you won't be hearing this until tomorrow or sometime Wednesday anyway. Now, tomorrow you'll be hearing it on Jack FM, on our sister station. But uh, the broadcast itself you'll be hearing on the Windy City Network in a day or two. Uh, Mary Borowski is here from the Summit Park District, and she's going to give us some announcements, some of the things going on at the Park District there, and um, let you know what's going on there and how you can get a hold of them if you're interested in any of these activities. So go ahead, Mary, give us your stuff there. Thank you very much, Bob. There's a couple um, happenings and programs here at our uh, Summit District um, which would be the Hip Hop Cycle, which is very new to us. Um, this is um, spin biking, uh, which we recommend um, ages uh, 16 and older. And we have that offering on Thursday nights from 6 to 7 p.m. and also Saturday morning from 9.30 to 10.30. This, is a, this class is very addictive. It's an indoor format, incorporates cycling and body movement with music, high intensity, hill and sprint, with low impact on joints and bones. The time just flies by when you're having fun. Major calories, burn, cardiovascular endurance as well as muscle conditioning. So bring a towel and water and have fun. And again, please call the Summit Park District at 708-496-1012 for additional information. Also, you can find the same information on our website www.summitparkdistrict.org. We have a senior trip going to the Rivers Casino in Des Plaines, uh, which is going to be taking place on January 17, 2017, next year. Yay! And it, the trip, round trip transportation uh, with a charter bus is only $3. So that means trips are, I, I'm sorry, not the trip, but the seating is limited. Is that a count how much money you're going to lose <laughs> at the casino? <laughs> <laughs> it's three dollars. Is that? I mean, is that like the what you're going to lose? Is that it, or is that that's what the trip costs? That's what the drone trip okay. costs. <laughs> and you get the buffet with the three dollars too? No, the buffet is going to be <laughs> nineteen ninety five, but you're going to get a. Um, uh, coupon just so you could uh, realize that wonderful price of $19.50. Uh, we do have a special uh, indoor activity for the seniors as well, and that is bingo, which is always um, a fun thing to do. And that's going to be um, on a Thursday. Actually, we change it to a Wednesday. And this is free admission. Um, so everyone receives a gift. It is fun playing with the cards, and there is an uh, announcer that calls out the numbers, and we do have like a Vanna White giving out prices. So again, for more further I'd go anywhere for Vanna White. <laughs> <laughs> for further information, please call the Park District or uh, check out our website. Uh, the Park District's phone number is 708-496-1012, and the website is www summitparks.org. Thank you. That's it? That's it for my So if I show up for this so bingo, short. what day is this bingo? <laughs> this is going to be on a Wednesday, January 18th. And oh, it's so January admission. 18th, if I show up, I get to see Vanna White and I get a gift. Yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. Okay. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. There's some stuff going on with the park district there, so check them out with their activities and wonderful things they got going on. They work very hard putting these things on. And um, 
Okay, we're going to introduce everybody here first. Um, Mr. Jim Perry. Hello. Hi, Jim. Welcome to Paranormal Radio. Thanks. Jim was actually with us in the play. He, he had a, a great part. He's got a great, a great... I loved his voice when we did this play, and it's going to sound great on the radio in the play, The Psychic. He's Mr. Graber, so he's here to do the play. Jessica Rovner. Hi. Jessica, thank you for coming back on Paranormal Radio. She's no stranger to Paranormal. <laughs> Happy to be here. Yeah, thank you for coming back again. Jessica, of course, is in the play. She takes a part in the play, and then she performs, too, with her brother, Mike, who's sitting right next to her. Hello, Mike. Hey, Bob. Welcome back to Paranormal yeah. Radio. Always happy to be here. And then and the reason for Jessica and Mike being here, their mom, Arlene Rovner, is here. Hello, hello. Hi, Arlene. And Arlene's got a part in this play, too, so we're all involved in this. And I got a part in the play. I'm actually the star. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> we won't talk about that. I'm, I'm the star doing the play as long as I got the script in front of me. Without the script, I'm just no good at this. So. <laughs> That's what I told everybody. Is, uh, Sir Lawrence Olivier, I certainly am not. That's for sure, not when it comes to acting. But it was a lot of fun doing. And we're going to try this on the radio, and we're going to see how it goes. Do you guys want to do a Christmas number first before we do the play, or do you want to do the play first? Whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, we can do one sure, first. You want to sure. do a number? What, what are you going to sing for us? Um, let's see. What do let's we see, I got it marked off. And okay. First one is Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. That sounds good to me. From, you know, what movie that came out of? Meet Me in St. Louis. Meet Me in St. Louis. Favorites. They almost cut it out of the film. Really? They almost really? cut it out because they felt oh. it was too song. Uh, too sad. The song was too sad. It is, but that's so one of my favorite parts. Took it out. Yeah, that. yeah. Mm -hmm. well, it's I'm cute how she she sings it to little Margaret O'Brien. Yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Have yourself a merry little Christmas, Mike and Jessica Rovner. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light From now on Our troubles will be out of sight Have yourself a merry little Christmas Make the Yuletide gay From now on Our troubles will be miles away Here we are as in olden days Happy golden days Gather near to us once more Through the years we all will be together If the fates allow Hang a shining star Thank you guys, very nice. Thank nice job, thank you. Yeah, it's kind of a sad song, but uh, yeah, it's just it's just that kind of a song. It's just a slow song. Very nice song. Speaking of Christmas, we yeah. are going to be showing the Nightmare Before Christmas at the Brookfield Recreation Hall on the 29th of December. Had it's sneak, free. Had to sneak that in, didn't you? I did. I did. <laughs> I had to get, notice how I just the nightmare is that the, that's the Tim Burton thing. It is uh, the Tim okay, Burton. Yeah. All right. And that's it's kind free. of a weird film. I remember seeing that. It yeah. is, yeah. but we figured we wanted something that wasn't yeah. going to be on all the TV stations, you know, twenty-five times. So that will certainly be one. That won't be. Yep. Yeah, that's yep. for sure. Yeah. You see, this time of year, you see, uh, it's a wonderful. I haven't seen it's a wonderful life once yet. I haven't yet. Yeah, yeah. No. No. yeah oh, you see that, that, and then of course they'll be showing, you know, the Christmas carols, you yeah. know, Scrooge Tale yeah. and that. Yeah. But is that going to be the original one? Which ah, I the original one we saw last week at the museum, right, Mary? Yes. We saw when we went to the museum of Saint Sinistry last week with the park. We went with the, on a park trip for the Christmas around the world, and you know, yesterday's Main Street. 
Mm-hmm. They oh, got the yes. little Nickelodeon. Yeah. yeah. They showed the 1910 Edison film, A Christmas Carol. Really? Oh, yeah, the oh, real, wow. real, real, real early one. Yeah. Did you ever no. see that? Jim? I did see that. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I was just over there at the uh, Science and Industry the other uh, this weekend. So. Did you go see the movie? No, I was there for uh, a different uh, a different show, but then like you didn't I, see it. I, well, I seen it before the the older version, back older than the Edison one. No, it was the Edison yeah. one, oh. but it was back. It was back another year. Another year, a year before the Edison film. No, year no, before it was. Oh, you year, saw it a year before. You year. saw last. I get it. Okay. I, was, I didn't know there was I'm old, old, but I'm not that I, I was, old. I was, I was, was going to say, I don't think you can get any earlier than that. You know, Edison films were like the first uh, stuff to come out there, yeah. And there, what's, what's neat about those movies is they're all like real short. They're like maybe 10 minutes long. That's mm-hmm. it. So you go through what would normally be like, well, we're used to seeing like an hour and a half film. They do the whole thing like in 10 minutes. Like our 10-minute yeah, plays. It's like yeah. our yep. I was yep. thinking, yeah. Yeah, like. that's about it, yeah. Speaking of which, should we get rolling with the play? Sure. Um, do we so. need we need an announcement with us now? You want to give the, the the author? I don't know who the gentleman is, Mike. You oh. have all that info. We want to give him some credit. Yes, <laughs> uh, it's uh, Evan Guilford Blake. Evan Guilford Blake. He has Which three names. Actually, did two of wrote two of our plays in our ten minute play oh. festival. Oh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this was the one we were lucky enough to do. Yeah, it was a, it was a fun play. It was a good and it's a good job. I liked it. Yeah, it was a good. Mm-hmm. It was a good play. So Evan Guilford Blake. That's his name, yep. Evan Guilford Blake. Okay, so this is his work. He wrote this. Uh, he's from Mr. Georgia. Blake, we do. He's, not he's from Georgia. Yes, but he lives yeah, in Florida now. No, Georgia now. Oh, he lives in Georgia now. I yeah. thought you said earlier he was in Florida. No, I made a mistake. Made a mistake. Oh, it's okay. Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, there was a different right. playwright that was from Florida. You just, I got. You just want to see confused. if I was listening, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, he wrote this play. It's a, a, t- a little ten-minute play here, and it's called The Psychic. And we're going to try this out on radio. Now, Mr. Blake, we did have to change a couple of the lines here because this is radio. So we had to do a little bit to your work. We left the original work, but we added a couple of things in just for the sake of some sounds for the radio. So it's a little explanation here for some things that would not come across too well on radio. So we did change that a little bit for you, sir. So we hope you uh, like what we did there, and we hope you are happy with the job we do on the play. Um, The roles will be as follows. Mr. Jim Perry is going to be Mr. Graber. And Jessica, go ahead. You are? Um, I'm Eileen Moses. Eileen Moses. And Arlene? I am Erica Morris. Erica Morris. And I am the psychic. I don't have a name. I'm just the psychic. That's it. So anyway. Now keep in mind that everyone except for Jessica has never been in a play before this. <laughs> We're all novices. Yeah, no, I was never in a play before <laughs> no, we yeah. did this, yeah. But it was a lot of fun doing it. I don't know if I'd ever do it again, but, uh, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun it doing it. It was, fun. yeah. Uh, it was, yeah. Okay, you want to just get started? Yep. Sure. Okay, here we go. Uh, the scene is as uh, follows. It's the psychic. That's me. I'm seated at the table reviewing papers. Donald and Aileen are heard off stage as the psychic hears them. I tuck the papers into the folder and put them on a desk other than the, uh, the one at which I'm seated. That's how we start off here. So we just have to give you a little bit of what's going on here. Okay. It's certainly a very nice vestibule. I still don't like it coming Shh. He'll hear you. You don't, um, we, uh, we don't mean to intrude, but the sign on the door said to just come in. Oh, good afternoon. Just one moment, please. Um, we made an appointment, Donald Graber and Eileen Moses. And you're exactly on time. Uh, please come in. Would you like a cup of tea or some water? Uh, no, no, thank, thank you. you. Well, I'm going to have some. A lot of water. Have you ever, have you ever been with a, met with a psychic before? No, we never done nothing like this. But you were highly recommended by Erica Morris. She's my neighbor. New neighbor. She just moved into the house next door to Eileen last month. Yes, Erica and I are old friends. Uh, she mentioned you. Well, what did you need? Oh, we've come about. Well, it. It's sort of hard to talk about. We, um, Mrs. Morris told us that you knew... Things. Or that you could divine them using your, what do you call them, cards and crystals and stuff? I can help find things, find out things, some things. This deck of cards can be very helpful. Uh Uh-huh. Tarot. Tarot. Oh. Tarot. Uh, But they have more to do with glimpsing possibilities of the future. Oh. We're here, um, um, it's about, well, we're trying to find out something. Uh, About, well, there are these sounds. What sort of sounds, Miss Moses? 
um, in my house at night. And during the day, too, sometimes. Yeah, they're, they're real peculiar. We told Mrs. Morris about them, and she said you could maybe help. Help? You mean make them stop or tell you what they are? Well, um, we, we think it maybe got to do with uh, Eileen's husband. Uh, why would you think that? Well, um, um, he died. Two months ago, in June. It was real sudden. They started right after that. He was an older man. Oh, no. Just about my age. It was an accident. He'd went for a drive over by the nature center. He loved it. Especially the aquarium and the birding trail. It was right after supper. He drank wine. <laughs> three or four glasses. And, uh, and he fell asleep driving and you might have read about it in the paper. Yes, I am very sorry. Thank you. But, see, we want to find out. We need to find out if... Uh, if, um, if he's all right. Because there are these sounds. And, and Erica, I mean, Miss Morris said that you could help us uh, find out. I'll certainly try. These are his ashes. His ashes? Yeah, I thought they might help. You know, if you... Well, I don't uh, know. Thank you, but I just don't think so. Oh. It has, it has a pretty heavy lid on it, doesn't it? Please be seated. Well, if it's all the same to you, we'd want to stand. We need to form a circle of hands, Mr. Graver. Well, if you say we should. Mm. You said you'd do whatever he said. No, but... We gotta find out, Donald. Mm, right, all right. I'll sit down. Now, as soon as I light this candle, I will try to get in touch with your husband's spirit. What is his name? Harvey. His name was Harvey. His full name? Harvey Lewis Moses. Hmm, Harvey Lewis Moses. Now... We must all join hands and close our eyes while I try... Close our eyes? We gotta close... Donald! It's silly. I mean, if he's gonna appear or something, I wanna be able to uh, see him in case... Uh, he, he, he won't appear, Mr. Graber. He, he won't? No, ghosts and spirits are very different. Ghosts often have a visible form, but spirits are ethereal and possess only a voice. Oh, ethereal. Uh, can, can we um, talk to him... Privately? I am his medium, Mr. Graber. If he wishes or needs to talk to you, he will through me. But he may speak to that only I may hear him. But if we don't hear him, how are we going to know it's the real him? You may ask a question. What kind of question? One that he would know the answer to, but that I wouldn't. Uh, the name of a pet, for example. Mm, well, we didn't really have a pet. Oh, but there's this stray dog that always comes around and he digs in everybody's yard and then leaves the stuff he digs up on the porches. Honestly, some of the things we found, Harvey called him, well, Harvey knows what he called him. I'll ask him. All right, if you'll be sure it's really him. Uh, communicating with the spirits is my gift, Miss Moses, or it's my curse. That's what I'm fortunate or unfortunate to be able to do. Hey, we know it is what you do. It's... Donald! Mrs. Morris said we had to do exactly what he said. Now close your eyes, please, for me. Oh, all right, all right, for you. All right, close your eyes and now join hands. I seek the spirit of Harvey Lewis Moses. Harvey Lewis Moses, there are those who wish to speak with you. I am here to convey their message. Will you speak with me? I call on you, Harvey Lewis Moses, to speak with me. Is that you, Harvey? It's Harvey? You're sure it's that Harvey? Are you Harvey Lewis Moses? That dog that dug in your yard, what was its name? Bones. Yes, Bones is what Harvey called him. You can open your eyes now, but please do not let go of my hand no matter what. Uh, we, we want to ask him... Uh, about the sounds. Um, is, is he making them? He has to. Why does he have to? He said he was trying to find the rest of the powder. The powder? Shh! Find what powder, Harvey? Or the tablets? Tablets? In my wine. In your... Come on! 
on, we're... No, there wasn't nothing in your I wine. I found the empty bottle this morning, Eileen. You Let's couldn't go. have Let's found the bottle. Now. We buried it. You couldn't have. No one could have. He couldn't have found I mean, it, Donald. No, He's we, making it up. We, uh, they're gone, Erica. Now you can come out. Good work. I got it all on tape. Mm, he broke the connection. Thanks, a, thanks for the sound effects. It's okay. This is Detective Erica Morris. They just left. Surveillance has their car in a lot, four blocks east on Cody. I'm a minute or two behind them. Meet you there with the warrant. Thanks, Sandy. Oh, you're welcome. It's enough. Oh, yeah. The autopsy made it pretty clear that he had something in him. We just couldn't be sure who put it there. But we got lucky. If Dave and me don't buy that house and that dog don't do his digging... And then you, hearing the voice and remembering we talked about that case? No uh, luck. Well, sometimes you gotta have a little. Hey, he didn't pay you, did he? I don't think he got his money's worth, Erica. They left so abruptly, they did leave his ashes. I'll take them with. Thanks. Here, you earned it. Compliments of the city. Take care. You have a good rest of the day. <laughs> Thanks. A hundred bucks. Any time, detective. Any time. Yay! <laughs> End of play. Okay, we'll have to hear that later on and see how it sounded on the tape. And um, I think that was easy to understand over the radio, pretty good. The only yeah, thing I screwed so. up on was the beginning. Remember I said in the beginning we'll have oh, to we talk about Oh, we were going to mention you. that I was... Yeah, yeah. But we didn't do that, but that's okay. We kind of got the idea. Erica yeah. was hiding behind the screen. Yeah, in case you didn't kind of get that, Erica was behind the screen, and she was the one making the sounds and everything, so it was like a fake seance. We were trying to trap them. Yeah, they were plotting So that's how that beginning. worked. <laughs> So anyway, yeah. that's how that went. It did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will give it. the story of the Christmas tree ship now. Uh, just in case you're not familiar with this, this is something I like to do every uh, year for Christmas. Uh, sometimes, too, I bring some old opera Christmas recordings on, too. But this time I didn't do it because I figured we'll have enough of uh, music this show with the, with the Roadrunners here, giving us their nice performances. Mm -hmm. So the Christmas tree ship, just in case you're not aware of it, also, too, I'll be doing it this week also on Wednesday night. I'm going to be on a show called Decoding the Unknown. About 10 o'clock in the evening, I'm going to be on that radio show, and I'm going to be doing the Christmas tree ship and then talking about some ghosts in the White House with that one, too. Anyway, Christmas tree ship is a nice one. It's, it's a Chicago story, so it's a, it's a local story, and I like to give that every year. Um, going back to about the 1880s in Chicago history here, Christmas tree ships were brought to the city, um, Christmas trees, I should say, were brought to the city, not by truck or train or any other way. They actually just hauled them on ships. What they'd do is they'd sail the ship from the city of Chicago, across Lake Michigan, go over to, um, Mich uh, to Michigan and Wisconsin, stay there for about a week or two, they cut trees, load the ships up, and then bring them back to the um, Clark, uh, Clark Street Bridge dock and sell the sh trees right off the ships. So the person that I want to be concerned with with this story is Captain Herman Schooneman. Uh, there were actually two of them. There was Herman and August. They were brothers. Uh, and August actually died uh, a little earlier. The year we're talking about now is 1912. August died on a Christmas tree ship in, 19, uh, in 1898, but then Herman still, the other brother, was continuing it. And the year we're in now is 1912. Uh, and 1912 seemed to be a little tempestuous and stormy on Lake Michigan that year. Uh, the fall was kind of a stormy uh, lake. It wasn't uh, good sailing weather. But uh, Herman decided to take his ship and bring it across and get a good load of trees and then bring them back and sell them. And it'd be kind of good because some of the other ships weren't doing it. So I figured if he can get a good load, bring them back, he'd turn a nice profit and pay off some bills and things. And that would be a great thing. And um, so he tried doing this. So about November 28th or so, he decided to take a crew um, on the ship, the Rose, Rose Simmons or the Roos Simmons, however you'd like to pronounce it. It's spelled R-O-U-S-E, was the name of the ship. And by 1912, it was already an old vessel. It was an old sailing vessel, uh, wooden, four-masted. So by 1912, these ships were already becoming outdated. We now had steam and gasoline-powered ships and things. So uh, old sailing vessels like this were already becoming outdated. So it was an old ship already by 1912. But decided to sail the thing across. So he did just that. Went across the lake with it, with a crew of seven men. They stayed there for a couple of weeks. They cut trees. They loaded the, the ship down really unusually heavy. They really took a big load of trees and decided to come back and, and sell those. But uh, en route, what happened was they caught a storm. Uh, a bad ice storm came up in November that year. Uh, it weighed the, the ship down. Uh, all the trees on the decks became very, very heavy with the ice and the snow and everything. It was pushing the ship down further and further into the lake. They actually cut some off. They tried getting rid of some of the cargo to lighten the ship, but it wasn't working. Then they lost their lifeboat. Uh, so the situation seemed not too good for them. Um, a lighthouse on the shores of the lake actually saw them, uh, sent out a small gasoline-powered boat to actually try to help. 
see what they could do for them. But that boat had to turn around itself because of the storm and couldn't go on any further. So they lost their lifeboat. They had no lifeboat on the boat. They lost that. They had no way to get off the ship. Uh, and what happened was the ship foundered, and it sank, and all the crew was lost. None, none of the men survived. Um, the captain did write a note, which turned up about a week later on the shores of Wisconsin. Uh, all is lost, all hope gone, no hope. And he put it in a bottle and sent it out, and they know it came from the Rose Simmons. So you think that would be the end of that, that that would end the story, but it doesn't end there. Um, what actually happened was a lot of the, sh the trees, which were last lashed to the ship, started bobbing up to the top of the lake from underneath the, the surface and would wash ashore onto the shores of Wisconsin and to the shores of Michigan and that kind of thing. They never made it to the city where they were supposed to be intended to go. But um, it kind of started spooking people. And people said, uh-oh, there's something strange. Haunted Christmas trees are coming up out of the lake. And also, <laughs> through the, uh, also through the years, this would happen from time to time. As the lashings and stuff, the moorings broke loose on the uh, ship as it was under the water. It's actually down on about 162 feet of water. Um, trees would break up from time to time and float to the surface and off to the shore they would go. And uh, so it, it it just was kind of a freaky thing. Then going on about, oh, 1922 or so, there was a fishing trawler on the lake, uh, which was actually named the Reindeer. And uh, that ship actually found in its net Captain Schooneman's wallet. They pulled his wallet up in 1922, so it's about 10 years later, from 1912, and a positive identification. He actually put his wallet in an oil skin bag, which sailors did at that time, to waterproof their valuables and stuff, and they actually turned it up, and they know it was his wallet because it had his identification and things in it and the few dollars that he had in his wallet. So um, that was the end of that. Um, Herman Schooneman's widow, uh, and they had two small daughters at the time of the sinking, Pearl and... Um, Oh, Pearl and Helen, I think, was the other girl's name. They had two daughters. Uh, they, when the girls grew up, they continued the tradition of the Christmas tree ship. They got another ship, actually sailed it across. They didn't. They themselves didn't do it, the girls didn't, but they had hired a crew. They had them do it, and they continued doing this tradition. And then after a while, that kind of, the 20s and 30s rolled around, and this sort of way of marketing trees was becoming a little outdated. So what they did is they would actually haul them by train now and by rail and by truck. But they would still truck them over to the Clark Street Bridge, unload them off the truck and put them on a ship and people would come onto the ship and buy the trees that way because it was just such a beloved tradition for Chicago. They did it for so many years. Um, for many years too, Barbara Schooneman ran a shop of her own, a, a, a souvenir shop, a Christmas tree shop, and there actually is one in Michigan. And the shop that's in Michigan now actually sells things that are made from trees that bobbed up to the surface, from the logs and things from some of these original trees. So you can go over there and you can buy some key rings and not, Christmas tree ornaments and things from the Christmas tree ship itself. Uh, like I says, the Rose Simmons itself does rest in the lake. It's still down there in about 162 feet of water. It was found in the 70s, I think 1972 or so. They found any positive identification of the ship itself. But uh, the crew of the uh, seven, including, including Herman Schooneman, nothing. No, never found. No sign of them at all. No trace, no human remains, nothing. The lake just claimed their bodies back, and that was the end of that. Never found. Um, Herman Schooneman and his wife Barbara are buried over in the uh, Acacia Cemetery, which is not too far from where we're at now, right from where we taped this show. Just a few blocks down, actually. It's not too far away. They're buried there, and there's a flat stone. It's a ground-level stone. It's got little Christmas trees on it, and it's got Barbara Schooneman and Herman Schooneman on it with the dates of their deaths on it. And, uh, of course, Herman isn't there, but Barbara is buried there. His wife is buried there. And it's also been said that at certain times when the conditions are just right, you go by that stone, pass by the grave, you can smell the scent of pine, some evergreens. Um, also, too, on Christmas Eve. Uh, Christmas Eve, if you happen to be in the vicinity or around the vicinity of Lake Michigan, they say if you look out over the lake when things are just right in the atmosphere, you can catch a glimpse of an old four-masted wooden sailing vessel. And a lot of people say that is the Christmas tree ship, trying to make its last run over to the Clark Street Bridge there slash Christmas run. So... That's the story of the Christmas tree ship. So we do have a little paranormal that goes with that. So I've never seen the ship myself. Of course, Christmas Eve, I'm never anywhere near the vicinity yeah. of Lake Michigan. <laughs> I'm usually somewhere else. Santa may see him in a sleigh, you know, in the sleigh when he flies, <laughs> he over, flies over. As he flies over the lake, I don't know if he's ever seen it. Next time I see Santa, I'll have to talk to him and see if that's anything that ever turned up. <laughs> so that's the story we've got of the Christmas tree ship, another little Chicago tradition. Uh, something they still do, by the way, the Coast Guard still does this. Matter of fact, last week on the news, they had a Christmas tree ship come in. Uh, Coast Guard brought in a load of trees, and these would go to poverty-stricken people, poor people that couldn't afford trees. That's what actually Herman Schooneman did himself. He was very well-liked and very beloved. Uh, they called him Captain Santa and Captain Christmas, that kind of thing. And the trawler that actually picked his wallet up, the one that found it, was named the Reindeer. Yeah. Yeah, so the Reindeer actually found the wallet of the Christmas tree captain. So, 
and he was that way too. He was a very beloved captain. He would do that too. He would donate a lot of stuff to churches and poor and sold his trees at reduced prices. He wanted everybody to have a tree. So a very nice man, but um, the lake kind of claimed his life. Okay, that's sort of a sad story. We have to take a break right now, so we will be right back. Stick with us, folks. We'll come back, and Mike and Jessica are going to give us another song. You're listening to Paranormal Radio with Bob Trisek from the John DeVito Broadcast Center on Jack FM 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich and the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network on Tuesday, December the 13th, the year 2016. And this is Jack FM 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich, Illinois. And now, friends, back to Bob Trisick and Paranormal Radio. Thank you, John. Thanks very much. That was a fast break for us. We get about a 30-second break here. When you listen to it on uh, Jack FM tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock or 10.30, John? 10.30. 10.30 will be on Jack FM at 89.7. When you listen to that, I don't know how long of a break they get, but we get about 30 seconds. Ours is really fast here. Uh, Christmas time... Um, a lot of people don't think too much of ghosts at Christmas, unless, of course, you're thinking of the Christmas Carol. Mm-hmm. People always say, "Oh, ghosts in the paranormal at Christmas time." He says, "Wait a minute! One of the most beloved stories of Christmas has four ghosts in it. You got Christmas Past, Present, Future, and then the ghost of Jacob Marley." Oh, yeah. And that's yeah. <laughs> Everybody forgets Jacob really Marley. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was a trivia question. They they asked, this, "How many ghosts are there in the Christmas Carol?" I got it right. I said, "There's four. Don't forget Jacob. He's the first one you see <laughs> on right. the door knocker." I when you actually, watch the movies. That was last Halloween. I went as Jacob Marley, and nobody With the got chains? it. I had the chains, and I had the tied around my head. Yeah. Nobody got it. You know why he had that tied around his neck? Why his head like that? No. So his jaw wouldn't drop. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah I have to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I heard that. yeah they tied that so because your jaw, you know, in death would right. drop. A lot of times no they put muscle. coins over the eyes, too. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, kind of a creepy thought. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, there's old Jacob walking around with this thing tied around his head and with, with these heavy chains which he forged in life. So you were Jacob Marley, but nobody understood it. Nobody, nobody got it. They got that it was a ghost, but they didn't get, they didn't oh. get Jacob Marley. Yeah. They didn't get the chains and no. the books and everything it in there? Yeah. So you had the kinda chains, the keys, the ghost. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure a lot of work went into that it costume, too. It's an iconic ghost. You know? Yes, you really. That's like, that's like a well-known yeah. one. Right. Yeah. Everybody knows Jacob Marley's yeah. ghost. Yeah. Yeah. He was the messenger. I mean, how could they not understand I know. Yeah. He's the one who foretold three ghosts are going to visit That's right. You. you did have to untie, though, when you sang. I did. I, sang, I, right? I had a gig that day, so on stage I couldn't have my mouth tied closed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to sing. sing that yeah. Way, yeah. yeah, I had to be able to sing, right. <laughs> Which instantly you're going to do for us right now. Yeah. What are you still going to sing for us this time? Uh, we're going to do Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. Yes, indeed. Okay, go right ahead. Take us rockin' around the tree. Go ahead, Jim. There's the tree. You can go rock around the tree. <laughs> <laughs> Rocking around the Christmas tree at the Christmas party hop Mistletoe hung where you can see every couple wants to stop Rocking around the Christmas tree let the Christmas spirit ring Later we'll have some pumpkin pie and we'll do some caroling you will get a sentimental feeling when you hear voices singing. Let's be jolly. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Rocking around the Christmas tree. Have a happy holiday. Everyone dancing merrily in the new old fashioned way. You will get a sentimental feeling when you hear voices singing. Let's be jolly. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Rocking around the Christmas tree. Have a happy holiday. Everyone dancing merrily in the new old fashioned way. Rocking around the Christmas tree, have a happy holiday. Everyone dancing merrily in the new old fashioned way. 
good, guys. Thank you very much. Very Thank nice you. performance. Thank you. So this has got to be a busy time of year for you guys. Now you got some parties booked up for yourself yeah, and set yeah, up. Yeah, we and got a little bit we're doing. Yeah. Uh, we had one of the town's holiday celebrations. Yeah, we, we did. played uh, out for everybody waiting for Santa. Oh, ah, yeah. okay. Was yeah. It was over at yeah, Irish, Irish Times. Times yeah. Yeah. At Irish Times doing yep. Irish Christmas songs? Uh, no, just no, general just Christmas, Christmas songs. Christmas. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was it was nice. All the kids seemed to enjoy it. They were all Is it pronounced Celtic along. or Celtic? I believe it's Celtic. Celtic? Yeah, so the C is hard. Yeah. So Celtic? Yeah. What is the new old-fashioned way? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. I, I always know. wanted to know. Every time I hear that song, it says, what is the well, new old-fashioned way? I guess what used to be old-fashioned, people don't do anymore. So it's what's old-fashioned now. So it's slightly less old-fashioned. It's not the really old-fashioned. It's stuff that just became yeah. old-fashioned. Just slightly out of You lost me <laughs> somewhere in there. I don't know what the heck. I don't know if it's got anything to We're do with just the It's got whoever anything. wrote yeah. the song sure. couldn't think of anything yeah. else. I should it, say it, that it, was it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was wondering, every time I hear that song, now who's the famous one that sings that song all the time? The artist. Mm. I forget the artist's name. The famous rendition that you always hear yeah, on the radio. Yeah, that you hear all the time. Yeah, yeah I can't yeah. think of who it is. Remember. Yeah, I forget. It's an old, it's an old it's song. An old, it's yeah, older than it I is. thought it was. Yeah, it's actually an older song. But that was a nice rendition. You don't have it on your music, do you? Not Burl Lives. No, no not Burl Lives. Burl Lives sings Have a Holly Jolly Christmas. He sings a whole bunch of Christmas yeah. songs. Yes. I think Burl Lives must that have done a uh, no, couple of albums. That's doesn't just who wrote it. It probably has the authors in it. Yeah, but it has the author, but yeah. not the who did it. Yeah. Oh, so it's a 58 it song. 1958. Yeah, that was older than I thought it was, yeah. Buddy Holly. No, not Buddy no, Holly. I don't think I'm so. just throwing names out there. <laughs> Buddy Holly died. Didn't he die on New Year's Eve or Christmas Eve yeah, or something? Yeah, New Year's Eve. Yeah, New Year's Eve. Eve. Yeah. yeah. Oh, gee, it's a creepy thought to think about, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So you guys got some gigs going for Christmas. Where are you going to be for Christmas? Um, um, we're not. We don't have anything. Yeah, we're we don't have anything. Playing Christmas, just kind of. Not Christmas just, Day, yeah. but I mean for the Christmas season. Now that it's coming up, um, where are you going to be? I don't know. Yeah, I don't think we re we really don't have too much yeah. coming up. Oh, Everything, well, all the, the Christmas even Christmas stuff, stuff we kind of did already. Yeah, it's, we're sort of us, done with Christmas. Give us your phone number. There's got to be somebody that's looking for some <laughs> yeah, entertainment. For, yeah. I mean, New Year's is coming. Christmas True. is coming. There's got to be people yeah, that look absolutely. for. I mean, you know, I man. Know the Odd Fellows. You may yeah, oh, that's right. I'm not sure what fellows, when that I'm one's going to be, but the Odd Fellows gets a fundraiser kind of thing they're doing. Okay. But yeah, we got on Facebook, Mike Rovner Acoustic Rock, if. Anybody's looking for somebody for Christmas or there for anything? Go. Yeah. Yes, we have uh, we have plenty of Christmas music. We do. We've been yeah. Doing it for a while now. <laughs> Christmas, New Year's, yeah, Valentine's. Funny. We, start, we got a lot of stuff coming we up. Started, so. Yeah. We kind of start Christmas. like right after Thanksgiving. People start doing, it, and then when you get close to Christmas, Everybody's not as many done. people. Yeah. yeah. People it dies out. With it yeah. Exactly. So we're kind of done with the Christmas. <laughs> They've already had all the party. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And you were so tied up in the ten minute play thing that yeah, we had a lot. That was a lot of work. Yeah. That that ten minute play was a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, that was a lot of work for yeah. you guys. I had it easy. <laughs> <laughs> I had it. I had it easy. I had the easy part of it. Yeah, I did. I did a ten minute play. That was it. You had it hard. You were the producer yeah. of this thing. Yeah. What exactly does work. What exactly does a producer do? Um, that's a don't say he produces. I was gonna say that's a little. Yeah. Um, anything. Gets, nothing. Yeah, anybody else wants to do. Whatever. Everything whatever needs to get happen. done that nobody else is doing. See, I always thought that the producer <laughs> was the guy that produced the money. And back the show. That's, I mean, that's kind of an old, like what it used to be, like back old day of stage kind of thing. Mm -hmm. If you think with like movies and stuff, the producers usually a lot more. They do all of the, uh, like getting the word out and getting, they do a lot of, the producer's usually the one who will like hire the directors. And, and kind of coordinate kinda, everything. Yeah. The story. So who well, finances like it? The backers, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. Like backers. the production the house or whatever. Yeah. Whoever, yeah. Okay. But like in this case, you had to reach out to get all the plays you what did you have yeah, about 80 fine. plays and then uh, out of the 80 the, or 100 they picked the top 10 uh, oh incidentally yeah. chris clem if you're listening to this broadcast uh, sometimes if you get a hold of the uh to listen to this on the computer or on youtube or on the windy city network at www.windycityhometown.com i did call you you were invited to come on so uh, <laughs> yeah. I, so we did it we did exchange phone numbers and you were invited to come on so i did i didn't forget you i did call you but i never got a response back from you so if you do feel like you want to come on the show you can come on for us next month or the month after that anytime you can want to come on i do the show once a month so you're invited to come on anytime you'd like to so i just wanted to let you know i did not forget you you were invited <laughs> but you didn't respond back maybe you were busy with some christmas gigs yourself maybe you were in theater playing the ghost of jacob marley somewhere i don't know <laughs> Yeah. Or Macbeth, another famous yeah. ghost. Oh, yeah, that's a famous ghost, yeah. Yes. Now, yeah. as a psychic, in this play, I, I think it was a real psychic 
but he was helping the police. What's your take on it? Were it you was, a phony? It, or no, in, actu in actuality, it is supposed to be a real psychic. Right. The way the way Mr. What's his name? The author? Uh, yeah, let me see. Yeah. Uh, Guilford Blake. The way, Mr. Gilbert. the way Mr. Blake wrote it, he actually did write it as a serious play. We turned it into a comedy. Well, no, <laughs> we so turned it. We did pretty good. Yeah, on we there. turned it. We I mean, really, we yeah. For the most, but well, we, uh, yeah, we tend to get a little yeah. carried away when we're rehearsing. So we yeah. didn't, that kind but, of um, made it, its it way was supposed to be a serious play, and he is supposed to be a serious psychic. Because we, because the yeah. detective does say you heard the voices, so yeah, you're yeah. a real psychic. So the so the psychic is supposed to be real in this, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Houdini would have been disappointed. I don't know. Because he always tries to prove that they weren't. Yeah, he did that in the twenties. He was real uh, famous, noted for that. He um, tried disproving, particularly after his mother died. After his mom died, he was really trying to disprove a lot of these psychics and stuff for phonies. Because in the twenties, that was like the heydays for the spirit mediums and seances and the psychics and everything. And you had a lot of people out there making a tremendous amount of money and bilking the public doing it. And Houdini went around and actually put up. Um, not only did he put up rewards for that, he said like a five thousand dollar reward, I think, if you could actually contact the spirits and prove you did so. But he also, if anybody actually had any encounters with the supernatural or ghosts, mm -hmm. uh, if you could do that, he also put up like a $5,000 reward. Uh -huh. If anybody had definite proof of the hereafter, he put up a reward. And as far as I know, no one ever claimed the reward. I believe yeah. what I heard, at least, I don't know if this is true, but that the reason that he got so angry with the, uh, the people trying to reach the other side was he had a seance done for his mother, and they wrote, they started it off by writing a cross on the top, and he was Jewish, so they said he knew that that couldn't have been his mom, because why would his mom have started it with a cross? Yeah, that's true. Eric Weiss, that was his real name, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah, interesting, yeah. Hmm. Interesting man, Houdini. A lot of things he did, they still don't know how he did them. And unbelievable, he worked at a time when there wasn't a lot of special effects mm -hmm. and stuff around, and some of the things he did just really baffled and amazed people. Could be another paranormal angle. Well, they right think there. he actually had. With magic. Yeah, yeah, they think. Well, I think it was a little more magic with Houdini. I think he. They think he actually had the se the secret of dematerialization, where he could actually dematerialize and reappear somewhere else. They think he was actually capable of doing it. Although no one's ever proved that either. So if That'd anybody wants cool. to, anybody yeah. wants to put up five thousand dollars <laughs> yeah. to prove you can dematerialize, <laughs> yeah. you know. And yeah. If anyone could come back from the dead, it'd be Houdini. That's yeah. right. Houdini could, and if anybody could come up with a machine to do it, it would have been Thomas Edison. Because Thomas Edison, actually, before he died, was actually had in the works a machine to bring back the dead or to communicate with the spirits, not to bring them back, but to communicate with the spirits. So Edison, being the man that was ahead of his time, uh, something he was doing long before all these paranormal investigators had their voice boxes and echo boxes and all these other gadgets that they use nowadays. So yeah, who's to say? Yeah. Something to it. Um, Christmas okay. season seems to be a very paranormal. You know, Halloween, of course, we go through the you know, paranormal. Halloween, everybody's interested in the paranormal for the month of October. But um, Christmas, too, you get a lot of people with a lot of remembrances of things of the past and a lot of things come back to people in dreams and, and stuff like that of loved ones that are lost and that kind of thing. Also, too, a lot of depression. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of suicides committed around the holidays because people get very depressed. I guess they just can't understand why so many people are so jolly and so happy and I'm just not. I don't yeah. seem to fit in. and. They jump off the nearest bridge they can find, so it's it's kind of sad that way that that happens, yeah. So it's a very joyous season, a very happy season, a very religious season, spiritual for a lot of people, but it can also, for many, many people, be very sad. That's why you're supposed to reach out to people and say something nice and do that for the holiday season. Throw a quarter in the Salvation Army kettle and say Merry Christmas to people and... Merry Smile. Christmas, you old building and loan. <laughs> 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 Remember, every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. Yeah. Jim, yeah. any thoughts on Christmas? No, I'm pretty... So what's your favorite you Christmas favor movie? Are you in favor of it? Christmas <laughs> memories? <laughs> a, favorite, a favorite memory of the past? How about a favorite... Let's do it this way. How about a favorite toy that you got as a kid that you remember... Everybody remembers a favorite toy. I remember my favorite toy that I got for Christmas. Um, I got... Um, I want to say the Shogun Warrior... Mon um, Robots like oh god, you're a lot younger than I am. Yeah, <laughs> I'm 51, man. Okay, so but um, it was like um, they actually you press a button, their arm shot out. It was really cool as a kid there, you know, when your sister's not looking or the cat's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't do it to the cats. I don't want to hit people. Just the, the sister, just the sister, and yeah, that's, fine. that's okay. You know, but, yeah, you so know. When, when the show goes up on YouTube, that we'll get a lot of comments. You know, don't like that guy that shot at the cats. You know? <laughs> yeah. Don't have it. Don't have that guy on again. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding on there, but yeah, those, that was probably the, the the coolest scene there because one was a Godzilla one that 
and his arm shot out and he pushed the little lever down there, and her tongue comes out. I remember those. That thing came in a pretty big box, too. Yeah. I remember those because I worked 24 years. I worked for Toys R Us, so I knew a lot about the old toys. Toys now mm-hmm. I'm lost on. But I, I remember all those old too. toys. You still got that thing? Keep yeah. it. might be a collector's item or something. It, it, from what I gather, it is. But. Oh, there you go. So the Shogun Warrior was your favorite. Jessica, what was yours? Probably some doll. I'm sure it was a doll. No, the thing no. I remember the most, my um, my uncle had sent me, he lived out in Arizona, and he sent me this, I loved The Wizard of Oz when I was little. It was a Wizard of Oz board game. Oh, so that would that be cool. Was, yeah. Yeah. And it was, Still, it, was ancient, it was old at the time. Yeah. He got it at a collectible shop or something. Yeah, so that was really cool. Was Somebody told me the other day The Wizard of Oz came up in conversation, and they said about these Oz festivals that they have mm-hmm. and all this, and they said a couple of the munchkins are still alive, and I said, to my knowledge, I think they all passed away. One of them still alive. Uh, yeah, I so thought it was, was one or two. Was one, one two, still around? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, the, the, it's like the, the lady. One of the ladies is yeah. still alive. Uh, there was two of them, but what's weird is that the gentleman died after, doing, after visiting uh, Chicago. They'd I know they would be on TV. They, they would, they would come up on uh, the shows. They would do some of the Chicago yeah. talk yeah, shows and stuff. Remember, they would yeah. come on. And they would go down. There's a place. He was one of the school. lollipop kids. Because remember, he would come on with his big lollipop. He would always bring his, <laughs> his big lollipop up. We yeah. all are the lollipop kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we represent the lollipop kids. <laughs> yeah. But I th- as far as I know, I thought they were all gone. But I guess there's still yeah, a couple of them. One. Yeah. There's one still one left. Yeah. But They were the singer's midgets. They were actually a vaudeville troupe that toured like all through Europe. Really? And Singer, the guy Singer, was like a German guy, and he was like their manager or whatever. And they said he was really mean to them. But but they liked him because he gave them work. So they liked liked him, but they said he was very, he really mistreated them and abused them and everything. And when they got the gig for The Wizard of Oz, some of them were paid like $50 and $100 a week, which was less than Terry the dog, who was Toto. Wow. Terry, Terry was making more money than the Munchkins were making, yeah. So that was kind of sad, but nonetheless, they liked doing it because you know what they said. A lot of them said about doing the Wizard of Oz, it was a great experience because they says they didn't know there were many little people besides themselves. Mm-hmm. Like one kid was like 16 years old, and he says he was so thrilled to do the Wizard of Oz because he says he saw other people that were like himself. So you know, good positive thing about that. Yeah. Yeah. So Wizard of Oz board game. Yeah. Did you ever get the ruby slippers? I did not. Although no? I do have a cute pair of red shoes that ah, okay. my friends at work call my ruby slippers now. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> There's no place like home. There's yeah. no place like home. <laughs> Mike, how about yourself? Any favorite? To- Probably a guitar or something. Well, I was going to say you. mine was. It was. Yeah, I would be going to that. When I was a little bet. kid, I got a triangle. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. my ding, first ding, ding, instrument ding. that I could yeah. It was, you know, for a four-year-old, that was really easy to play. That was... The only thing and I could ever, the yeah, only thing, like. the only thing I could ever play in my life, and I tried, I tried playing a couple of instruments, but I could never play anything other than the radio. That was it. <laughs> yeah, that was all I could ever play. I never had any musical talent. No, 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 nothing for me. So a triangle for you is probably the first toy. It's something that you see, it's something you remember. Yep. Made an impression yep, on you, and you, went, you go into music with your life. Mary, how about yourself, Mary Borowski? Well, interesting enough, my first toy that I could remember clearly is a, uh, a three-foot doll, blue eyes, blonde cl- curly hair, <laughs> with a pink dress, <laughs> pink shoes, and white socks. Yeah. And that was your that was your doll. That, that was, was really my something. doll. That was my toy. Yeah, that was really something special. I can remember a, my fa- one of my favorite toys I got for Christmas was a farm set with all the farm animals in it. I can remember that. That was like you know with the old it had a metal barn and all the animals were plastic and that because I used to love the farm and everything like that. I always loved the farms and stuff and that I can remember. That just for some reason that really sticks out in my mind. Probably not the best of toys, but that was just something that I really liked. You know, so yeah. How about yourself, Arlene? Well, my brother used to work down on Maxwell Street. He oh, jeez. Oh, he, yeah. He was about 11, 12 years older than me, and he brought home. I went to bed Christmas Eve. He put together, it was only cardboard then, not nearly as fancy as what they have now, but a stove, a refrigerator, and a ah, sink. Ah, okay, the old kitchen set the thing. The old yeah. kitchen yeah. set, cardboard, but a heavy cardboard. <laughs> he put it all together. I got up in the morning, and that was... Wow, that was it. That you was you it. fried eggs all day long. I did, yeah. I did. When I tried to put the water and wash the dishes, <laughs> it was a mess, but no. <laughs> yeah, see, it's certain things, you know, it just sticks out in your mind. Yeah. John D., how about yourself, sir? What do you remember as a kid about... What do you, uh, you probably probably got very few toys as a kid. What what kind of toy did you ever get for Christmas? That's like your favorite thing you can remember. The railroad. A railroad, a railroad train. Yep. Mm-hmm. A train set. Yep. yep. Lionel. Yep. And you put it around the tree. That's right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
Yeah, that used to be a real popular that, thing to that, get that, kids that, with that, the railroad set. That's right, yes. Do you still have that set? Uh, I get, my, my son's got it. It'd be worth a fortune now, yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. It's an old lion. Back, They're very it, collectible. Uh, that was back in 1938. Oh, geez, yeah. And yeah. uh, you know, it was the, uh, the old gauge. Yeah. And my dad uh, uh, took uh, uh, t- two big pieces of 4x8 uh, plywood and made it uh, uh, in in, the, in my bedroom. He <laughs> I was evicted from the bedroom, but <laughs> where was the train the train depot? And he had uh, the train would go around, and they have the gates to go up, and the man come out to uh, stop traffic. And uh, cool. He had the farm. You know, when you talked about the farm, he had the, he had a farm there, and and a bridge, and the bridge would go up, and um, oh yeah, that was that was quite uh, was, was quite a train a train set he had. We had a layout like that in the basement. My dad did that for us, too, on an old dining room table. He put mm-hmm. a board, and mm-hmm. same thing, we had the grass on it and everything, mm-hmm. you know, and all exactly. that. Exactly. But yep. it wasn't trains. We had the old um, cars, HO cars. Mm-hmm. We had a car layout. My brother still collected. He still got a lot of his old trains, too, because my yeah. brother was into the trains. Mm-hmm. We always had a train around the Christmas tree. We always had one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's funny how you remember, like, those toys. You know, it's something yeah. you remember because yeah. it just really stuck in your mind. It was really something that really wowed you, you know. And it probably wasn't like the most expensive thing or whatever, but it was just something that really you remembered as a kid, really impressed you. You know, yeah, yeah, cool. I like those kind of memories. That those are good Christmas mm-hmm. memories. Yeah. I know the kids used to help my mom put together. We would have a she would have a whole entire village under the tree that she had saved from year to year to year. Uh, ice skaters. She'd put a mirror down and. All that, and that was the big tradition. The kids yeah. would help her put it together. John does all that. John DeVita. Oh, that's does, right. Yeah. He, he does, does all that stuff. If anybody yeah. goes upstairs, uh, look look in my front room. Uh, uh, the young lad that lives with me, Oscar, he put up the tree. He put up the tree and the, the lights and the ornaments and the garland and all that. And then, then I got down underneath the tree and I I I, I do the village. And I tell you, it really looks beautiful. I I, I grew up with that. My mom and dad. My well, my mom and and dad uh, used to do that all the time and and then uh, now uh, since they passed away my my sister has my mother's village and 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 everything and she up in Wisconsin up in Elkhorn she has three Christmas trees with three villages oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, and it, she starts she starts uh, around Thanksgiving and um, and uh, you know, you get everything taken down by the time Easter rolls around. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And my place up there too is all decorated uh, outside. I have a big, 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 big backyard, and uh, my um, my helper Ryan Pearson, who uh, was my right hand man up in Wisconsin, uh, him and my sister were over uh, over the weekend, uh, uh, Friday and Saturday, and they decorated. Got all my trees are lit up, and I got Santa Claus reindeers and. Uh, all, all kinds of stuff. So the place is really, really beautiful uh, um, when it's lit up up there. In fact, uh, from what I understand, at Channel 12 up in Wisconsin, WISN is supposed to come out and uh, meet up with me and uh, and uh, put it on, uh, on 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 television. Oh, cool! You have to let us know. Yeah, let us know. Yeah, we'll do videotape it or something so we can see it. If you yeah. think of it, mm-hmm. yeah, tape it for us. Yeah, we don't get Channel 12 here, obviously. So no. Yeah. So. Yeah, channel cool. 12 is a nice channel up, up there. Uh, WGN does that in the mornings, too. They find these houses, because yeah. WGN mm-hmm. comes yeah. on like at 4 o'clock yeah. in the morning when it's still dark. Right. Yeah. And they'll go to these houses all that are still lit and everything, mm-hmm. and they, they show them all on that. Yeah. Well, all my all my lights, especially here here out in front and in the back here, this is all on timers. So it goes on at a certain time, it goes off at a certain time. Hmm. Up in Wisconsin, I have to turn the lights on because I got so many. I, w- I would need about uh, at least at least 25 timers <laughs> to, uh, you yeah. know, because I got a lot of property. I didn't know they had there. timers in Wisconsin. I thought they were a little bit behind Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Technology. Oh, God. <laughs> now we're going to get letters from people oh, in Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just remember, the Bears play the Packers this week. This, yeah, they sure are, yeah. And yeah. we have a Packers fan sitting here. Well, there's, there's another loss for the Packers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of them this season. Yeah. That's how it goes. My thing was and nativity sets. Year. I always put up a nativity. Yeah, when I was a kid, I loved the nativity, and I got the nativity I have now is like stuff I've collected like for years, and some of them are real, real old pieces that I've got, you know, and that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, some of them I still got the prices on them. It's fun, it's fun to see the prices. Some of the figures, because you know, years ago they used to have the bins, and you could buy extra odd pieces if you broke something or that. So every time I found something like I didn't have or something different, I bought it. Mm-hmm. Some of them were like nineteen cents. 
then some of the wow. prices go up to 39 cents, then some of the prices go up to 94 cents. Now, last year I went to Walmart and I bought a camel and a donkey because I wanted to get a fancy camel for the kings, you know, with, with the saddle and everything on it. I think I paid a dollar ninety four for that one and the donkey. They were a dollar ninety four. So yeah. from 19 cents, I went to 194. Wow. <laughs> the uh, the uh, the manger and and the, the the village that my sister has, especially on her tree in the front room, is goes all the way back to 1938. That's how, 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 how old her, her manger is. and, and uh, A couple of the pieces I yeah. got are real old ones, too. Mm -hmm. when, when I was a kid, geez, how did I inherit that set? Well, oh, here's how I did it. When I was a kid, my mom used to be in the ladies' club or the mother's club or wherever it was, and there was a lady, Miss, Mrs. Vasile. And Mrs. Vasile had a daughter, Betty, and her and I were in the same grade. So my mom would have to go to their house for whatever reason. She had to go there, and they would do stuff for the ladies' club or whatever, so I had to go along with her. So, of course, when I got there... Her being a girl, there was nothing for me to play with because she had all dolls. I'm not going to play with the dolls, you know. She had a brother, Chuck, but Chuck didn't have any trucks or anything. I think Chuck played with the dolls, too, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but anyway, um, there was a nativity set. And so I would play with the nativity set. So one year, she says, Bobby, would you like to have that? Because they bought a new one or something. So I would love it. So I got this old nativity set, which when they had it, it was old. You know, it was junk to them. That's why they were getting rid of it. And I still got some of the pieces from that set. And then, you know, over the years, I've just... Added and added and added and added onto it, you know, and it's underneath the whole table now, you know. I actually have ten wise men, not oh. three. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do three, but I rotate yeah, them. Every year I put different ones up because I have so many different ones, so every year I do three different ones. <laughs> I have kind of a paranormal story about my nativity set. Ah. Uh, my mom passed away, and my sister brought over a box with my mom's nativity set, they're about, what would you say, about a nine to 12 inches high yeah. in figures. And there's a blue cloth on top, there's a white cloth, and I'm like, oh, well, yeah, I'll figure out some place to put it. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, I said, oh, what's this blue cloth? It was actually the valance of a, of a um, drapes. Oh, okay. But my mom used to put it up at the top a certain way, so... I said, okay, great, thanks. I'm going to the grocery store. I get a call from my girlfriend, and it's one friend of mine who's rather intuitive. And she says, okay, she says, this is really weird. She says, you're, you're going to think I'm crazy, but your mom says, put it on the piano, use the blue cloth, and make it look nice. She said, I have no idea what she's talking about. And I went, repeat that. <laughs> and sure enough, that was that's where... Ever since I put the nativity set. On the piano. Set up in the is, same spot. Yeah, 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 I would do, yeah. This is the same girlfriend. Because somebody took the trouble to give you that message, yeah. yeah. This is the same girlfriend when my mom passed away. She called and she said, my sister had said, oh, should we use, should we put mom in the blue dress or the pink dress? I go, I don't know. Which. My girlfriend calls. She says, your mother said to put her in the periwinkle dress. And I went. Whoa. My mother was the only one who used to call that dress periwinkle. Yeah, you don't hear that color I, mentioned no. too much. Yeah, you <laughs> no, know. She really goes, I yeah. have no idea. Periwinkle is sort of a purplish pinkish kind of, isn't it? Sort Blue, of kind of like a purplish pinkish, gray. Purplish yeah, pinkish, yeah, bluish yeah. gray, yeah. And, it's sort um, of like heliotrope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's another odd color. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. She, that's what we did. But she said, yeah, your mom says that's the dress she wants to be. Wow. And like, she had... No idea I was talking to my sister about this or anything. Oh, neat. So. That's a good story. Yeah. Most people, I think, when they do experience, I, I always say that, like, their first one of their first experiences with paranormal is usually through a loved one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's usually the way it goes, you know. Yeah. Eh. And this is a good time of year for it, too. Yeah. Christmas brings back the memories and stuff like that. Yeah, the emotions run high at the holiday yeah. season. Yeah, they really do. Yeah, with traditions and with things and that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's see here. Closing statements. Jim, you got anything to say in closing? It's been a pleasure coming over here. It's uh, been a pleasure having you. Thank you, sir. Come back anytime you want. You live close, right? You live two blocks away. You could walk over here. Well, anytime well you two like. and a half miles, but that's, that's, that's a hot skip and a jump. Two and a half number. miles, that's nothing. A couple yeah. inches of snow, walk barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. My golly, that's about what we're doing right now, yeah, walking barefoot. that's it. It's funny, like when you go down south, I remember one year I was in Tunica, Mississippi, and they had a snowstorm. You know, winter snow warnings in this Mississippi are coming across the screen. Two inches of snow. I'm like, are you kidding? We go barefoot yeah, in Chicago. Awesome. It's nothing, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's a, that's a winter storm watch? <laughs> yeah, for Mississippi it was. <laughs> yeah. 
third. <laughs> <Very> mild. <laughs> Jessica, anything to say in closing? No, not really. Just Nothing. glad to be back. Thank it's you. always come, nice to be here. Come back anytime you want. You're always welcome to come back on. You can come with or without him. It don't matter. <laughs> 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 no, we can't break up the team. Mike, how about yourself? Anything you got going on? Um, Not really. Not not with the holidays or anything. I just, thanks again, everybody. Oh, did, yeah. did the Did the play and everything. It turned out so great. It was it very was good. A lot of fun. You, yeah, you did so a lot of work fun. and a lot of effort in it. Yeah, very much. Yeah, you should be commended for that. Yeah, it was a lot oh, of work you. you put into that. Because you did the lighting, you did a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We show up the first night at the Lions thing for the rehearsal, and Arlene goes, Oh, Bob, you could help with the lights. I says, Arlene, are you kidding? I said, That was 40 years ago when I was a kid. I worked at the Candlelight Dinner <laughs> Theater. I said, I don't, I don't remember how to do the lighting now. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> No way. Yeah, but that was a lot of work. You, you did a good job. Out. Yeah, we yeah. had it. Yeah. You did a good yeah. job. Everything was real One, nice. Yeah. Once I realized that it wasn't plugged in, I figured out what the problem <laughs> was. It works better when you <laughs> plug it in. That's an important first step. I have, to, I have to be honest. I really did not watch any of the plays. Mm. But the only reason I didn't do this because they all looked so good. I didn't want to see how bad I was going to look up there <laughs> because they all looked. Some of them were really fantastic. They some were, did a really yeah. good they job. Were. Yeah. However, I did hear from several people that ours was their favorite. So oh, really? We did a good job. Oh, yeah. We have a following. We do. Yeah. We, we have, have fans. Seven, we have seven groupies out there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, uh, how about yourself? Anything to say? No, no I think that's just about covers it. And you want to mm-hmm. give us your number in that again, or oh, your Facebook yeah, thing we'll in see, that? Uh, yeah, it's uh, Mike Rovner Acoustic Rock on Facebook, and that's for both of us, yeah. me and Okay, Jess. so they can get a hold of you that way. Yeah. yeah. All right. So if they're interested in booking you for any gigs or anything, that's how they can get a hold it's, of you. Yep. Mary, it's always a joy having you here. Come Aww, back anytime you want. It's yeah. a pleasure yeah. to be here. Thank come you. Come back on anytime you want, Mary. Yeah, you're always welcome to come on. Arlene, anything you got going on in closing? Nope, nothing, nothing? much. Merry Christmas to everybody. Yeah, everybody, and I yeah. Think Merry Christmas, great, Happy Hanukkah, yeah. Happy Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate this time yeah. of year. Just be Have nice a wonderful to people. one. Yeah. yeah. Go out and do something nice for somebody. And Happy New Year. Yeah. Yeah. Happy, yeah. happy, happy New Year coming up. Yeah. yeah, 2017 will be coming up. Yeah. Jeez. Oof. I never thought I would live that long. <laughs> <laughs> 2017, isn't that amazing? It, I got, it seems like just the other day we were talking about the millennium yeah. coming and, yeah. and everything oh, yeah. shutting oh, down. Remember for the millennium? <laughs> yeah. And now here we are going in 17 years later after the millennial. Wow. That time has a way of flying by. Oh, gosh, I tell yes. you. It's not 1938 anymore, John, is it? Nope. I don't know. Years fly by. Well, thank you all for coming on. You guys want to do a number for us in sure, closing yeah. and yeah, take we'll us out with out. a number? You can do a harmonica number? No, no, that was just <laughs> that was other. just sound effects for the play. Oh, that was just sound effects yeah. for the play. That was it. Oh, it's a nice harmonica, actually. Feels like a lot better yeah, than the ones you get in the Cracker Jacks box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit of a step up. Yeah. Um, you have a pick in the harmonica box. Well, I don't have anything to hold my picks, and since the harmonicas always come with my guitar. I was going to say, I've never seen anybody play a mar- harmonica with a pick. <laughs> no, it's a little... But maybe he's on really, to tricky. something new, yeah, you know. it's tricky, but it's worth it. It's America's most <laughs> talented, you know. <laughs> hey, you know... What am I? Well, I told you I don't know anything about music, so <laughs> maybe they're onto something new. Of course, you are. Okay, <laughs> what are you gonna do for well, us? We're gonna be playing something a little different so since it's so cold and snowy out I there. I was hoping you were gonna do this. Yeah, this we is a song. We try and make yeah. it seem a little bit warmer. A little bit let warmer. It snow, <laughs> let it snow. Let it snow. Let it snow. This is called uh, <laughs> Christmas Island. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not familiar with this song. Love to hear it. Okay, Mike and Jessica Robner performing Christmas Island. How'd you like to spend Christmas on Christmas Island? How'd you like to spend a holiday away across the sea? How'd you like to spend Christmas on Christmas Island? How'd you like to hang your stocking on a great big coconut tree? How'd you like to stay up late like the islanders do? Wait for Santa to sail in with your presents in a canoe. If you ever spend Christmas on Christmas Island, you will never stray for every day your Christmas dreams come true. How'd you like to stay up late like the islanders do? Wait for Santa to sail in with your presents in a canoe. If you ever spend Christmas on Christmas Island, you will never stray.
pray for every day your Christmas dreams come true. You will never stray for every day your Christmas dreams come true. Keep playing. Tell them to keep playing. Go keep playing? Okay. How'd you like to spend Christmas on Christmas Island? How'd you like to spend the holiday away across the sea? How'd you like to spend Christmas on Christmas Island? How'd you like to hang your stocking on a great big coconut tree? You have been listening to Paranormal Radio with Bob Trisek from the John Avila Broadcast Center on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network and Jack FM 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich. Paranormal Radio was directed by John Avila and a special thanks to our Executive producer of Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network, Mr. John Chaconda, and the radio station manager of WRHS FM Norwich, Mr. Kevin Zeflick. This broadcast was pre recorded on Monday, December the 12th, the year 2016. On behalf of the entire staff of the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network, the John DeVito Broadcast Center, and the management and staff of WRHS FM Norwich, we wish you, each and every one of you, a very, very happy and blessed Christmas and a happy New Year. Thank you very much. Sorry about that, guys. We ran a little overtime on that one there, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, Jim, thanks for coming on. Jessica, thank you. Sorry we had to kind of cut your song up there, chop you up there a little bit there. Song makes you want to go out and kiss a pineapple, don't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mike, thank you. Mary, thank you. Arlene, thank you. Everybody have a wonderful Christmas season. Thank you so much. John, thank you so much. Bye-bye, folks. Have a wonderful season. And this is Jack Jack Frost FM 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich Illinois